Uh, to ask a slightly personal question now, uh, and maybe away from the book, because uh, this will have uh, an effect on, say, probably the next strand of thinking that I'd, I'd like to pursue with you. Uh, there, there, there is a bit of uh, uh, debates around Ambedkar in university campuses in the book, but uh, before asking that question about that debate, I wanted to know how is your time in Jawaharlal Nehru University influential and your students influential in the writing of this book? Greatly influential, uh, deeply influenced by what has been going on in our university, but not just the immediate turbulent period, the last three years, uh, but something which uh, is a longer, of a longer duration, um, since I also was a student myself of, the, of this university, um, in which uh, I myself have uh, both uh, seen but also experienced close at hand the changes of political paradigm. The, th the, the paradigms that uh, form and influence thinking about politics and acting, political activism on the campus. So what is called um, the left, the historical left, and J Jawaharlal Nehru University, JNU, uh, has of course been um, a vivid symbol of living leftism, mm -hmm. of living left thinking, um, is something which I myself have been a part of uh, over a very long period of time. Uh, but I have seen the paradigm change shift mm -hmm. uh, from both uh, from a certain distance but also from close at hand over a period of time uh, which, uh, which is something ex of extreme s uh, interest and significance to me. So it is neither something to celebrate as the fall of a totalitarian as the right, the right establishment celebrates as a fall of an inherently totalitarian left world, uh, including now in JNU, nor is it something to mourn and lament that, oh, the great days of left are gone and who knows, who are these new, you know, troublemakers? Not at all. For me, it's the third thing, which is exactly what I talked about in my earlier Ensign Ambedkarite lesson, uh, which is that new research programs insofar as they are reflections of new questions, new problems, new events of possibility uh, are happening even within the university space, including in GNU. Uh, so, so that's something I respond to with a lot of interest. And um, a lot of that, I thought, forms the initial, uh, not just initial, but ongoing mm -hmm. inspiration and energy of this book. The if very energy to sustain a reading of Ambedkar on real grounds, not mm -hmm. just it's an abstract um, sense of a s s course or a syllabus. Right. But then, you know, that's the point. And Ambedkar anyway is not part of most yeah, of the syllabus. Syllabus is. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. In fact, uh, I'd like to draw uh, my line, uh, your like your attention to one of my favorite lines in the book itself, which says, uh, "It is more or less settled that the left has no new arrow to shoot, but is it within, is but is it within their capacity to receive a new Ambedkarite wound? This is what." the ASA, which is the Ambedkar Student yes. Association in Hyderabad, and others yeah. are asking. So what is it that you mean by this wound? And wh why would you use this particular term? Yeah, yeah. Uh, to, me, to me, the motif of thinking is always uh, something which changes you or uh, produce, poses the possibility of changing you. Mm -hmm. Changing you means changing your str the structures that hold up your certainties your presuppositions, what in slightly technical language we call axioms, mm. based on which we draw our inferences or mathematically speaking theorems, which in political language would be consequences. Uh, but those initial ideas, principles, Ambedkar calls them principles. Uh, those principles are themselves wagers, risks of thought. Mm. They are acts of thought. They are not given to you by any great book or great god, uh, god of, of thought. Uh, thought is something that we have to take responsibility for. Uh, but whatever we take responsibility for, we are also uh, then vulnerable to being wrong about those very principles. So um, Ambedkar says this, that uh, in Annihilation of Caste, that they ha we have to make our principle. They could be wrong. Mm -hmm. The principles could be wrong principles. but. They are principles for which then we are obligated to take responsibility. And it is in this sense that uh, I asked the uh, question that is 
something that we call the left as a historical subject willing to take responsibility for if not being able to think but at least trying to think being able to try to think of new principles or alter if not new in an absolute sense because uh, one could say that why should one question say Marx's principles I mean the reading of Marx I mean that's another question we could go into that but it's not just that it is the principles of the situation so if a do you do you accept that the situation is something which is undergoing and is undergoing is bound to undergo uh, extremely significant and razor edged changes mm -hmm. and to that change you don't merely adapt you don't merely uh, again lament the change as something which produces a kind of melancholy a melancholy a kind of nostalgia a melancholic nostalgia not not either of those two things but something to which you then produce for this change new principles right so but then those principles could be wrong mm -hmm. you, you there's no guarantee to that extent the the motif of thought that is the thinking of principles or the think of axioms in a slightly different language is always inherently perilous dangerous mm -hmm. it is possibly something which could wound you which could create a, a, a greater fissure in the situation or it could emancipate right. but it is to be able to expose yourself to that possibility mm -hmm. so it is not so much the actual wound as the exposure to the possible wound of thought uh, mm -hmm. is what I uh, what I at least wonder about um, as far as the left is concerned uh, whether such a possibility the left is willing to expose itself to uh, this is my, the meaning of the metaphor of the wound.